Good morning, it's 9.06, six minutes past nine o'clock on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA, WTMA.com. This is the 2015 uh, Mayor's Debate here on WTMA. I want to welcome uh, Leon Stavronakis to the program. Thanks for being here. We appreciate it. Glad to be here. Thank you for having us. Also, uh, Mr. John Tecklenburg, sir. Thank you very much for uh, being on with us. Thank you, Charlie. All right. We want a, a nice, lively debate. We're not going to put a whole lot of restrictions on you guys this morning as far as time is concerned. We are going to limit opening remarks to about two minutes apiece. Um, to answer questions this morning, you'll have as much time as you feel is necessary, but we want to make sure that nobody, that you each be respectful to the uh, the other candidate in uh, uh, making your uh, replies or your uh, comments as succinct as possible uh, so that we can get as many questions on this morning as we possibly can. <clears throat> we uh, we uh, tossed a coin a few minutes ago to find out who was going to go first in their opening remarks. Mr. Tecklenburg, you won that, so your opening remarks, sir. Well, thank you. Good morning again, and good morning to all the listeners out there. It's always great to be on the mighty TMA. <laughs> I am John Tecklenburg, and I heard a call to serve our community um, and decided to offer myself for service. Um, it's really based on a few things, one being the incredible family that I grew up here in Charleston uh, with. They were a shining example of giving back to the community. Also, my faith in God. I, I believe when we're able that we should serve our community and our brothers and sisters. And, and thirdly, a, a, I feel a unique composite life experience that I've had of, of being a leader and executive in business and in city government. I served as executive director of the city of Charleston, and I've been the leader and president of numerous civic organizations and nonprofits. And I believe this knowledge of the heart of our city and the fabric of our city has qualified me to help lead us forward um, in the challenges that we face ahead. My vision for Charleston is to be the number one place to live. I'm so excited that we were successful in becoming such a great tourism destination, being a number one place to visit. But I think we need to focus more on those issues and challenges that face our community for us citizens that live here. I'm a very positive person. People ask me, is your glass half empty or is it half full? And I say it's overflowing because I'm mm -hmm. very optimistic in general and I'm very optimistic about our city's future. I think our best days are yet to come. Uh, Leon and I were both uh, this morning at a community prayer breakfast. And I thank all the people in Charleston who, who have bathed me and Leon in this campaign with prayer and, and thinking about the future of our city. And I, I just want to say that regardless of the outcome um, Tuesday, and I'm a willing servant, I'm ready for whatever the voters and what God brings us, but I look forward to working with Leon and, and helping make Charleston the very best place that it can be for our future. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Stavronakis, your opening remarks. Thank you again uh, to TMA, to you, Charlie, for having us here. Thank you to the listeners who are tuning in. I want to say hi to them all. John, hi. Good, Good to see you again. Yes, sir. Um, John and I have known each other for years, but never quite as well as we know each right. other now yes, yes, yes. <laughs> after the last few months. Um, listen, I, I, you know, I'm Leon Stavronakis, and I was born and raised here in Charleston. I grew up in West Ashley, grew up in Lenovar, uh, right across from Charlestown Landing. Went to public schools in West Ashley. My wife Ann and I live in West Ashley now. I'm a, pretty much a West Ashley lifer. My mm -hmm. three kids go to public schools in West Ashley. And I've been blessed to serve our community as a business leader and as chairman of Charleston County Council, as a member of the state legislature. Charleston has been so incredibly good to me and my family. Uh, my, my dad came here uh, as an immigrant from Greece. He had no education um, and did everything he could to become an American and to create a better life for his kids. And honestly, public schools and this community are what changed the trajectory of my life and my kids' life. And I love Charleston so much. I, I think it is the best place in America to live right now. My focus is on doing the things that we need to do to keep it the best place in America to live. You know, in traveling around this town for the last 10 months, uh, especially the last couple of months with, you know, incredible intensity and, and the runoff time, it's so obvious that people are really tuned in on 
how we manage our growth and what we do about traffic in this community and how we get our schools to the same quality of excellence we experience in so many other uh, aspects here in Charleston. Our quality of life is, is really excellent. But those areas are the ones that people are talking about. And I've got a proven record um, in this race of success on transportation. I'm the only person with that proven record in the race. I've got a proven record of managing growth. I did it for the county. I can do that now for our city. Um, I've done it for county lands, and now our city needs that same leadership to provide a framework for managing our growth in a way that's smart and sustainable and takes care of the incredible quality of life that we love so much here in, in Charleston. We need a serious leader, a proven leader, who can tackle these challenges. We've had a, an amazing leader for 40 years, and he is shown clear as day the difference that tested proven leadership can make for a community. He left the legislature, had great relationships there to help bring funding to Charleston to meet a lot of our road and infrastructure needs, but that work is never done and that has never been more clear than we've seen it in Charleston in the last few, few months. And so we've got to tackle these traffic and quality of life and growth issues if we're going to stay the best place in America to live. I've got a proven record on those issues. I'm the only one with a proven record on those issues, and I want to bring that energy, experience, uh, and love for our city to the mayor's office mm -hmm. and keep this place the best place in America. All right, uh, we'll get to the questions now. All towns that I've ever lived in have all said that they have a horrible traffic problem, and we know that uh, here on WTMA we get calls every single morning talking about the traffic. Sometimes we see uh, the traffic times from Somerville to downtown well over an hour. Um, with 47 new people moving into the area a day, what are your realistic plans on easing congestion? We'll start with Mr. Te Tecklenburg. Well, thank you, Charlie. Uh, traffic is the number one impediment to folks enjoying a great quality of life here in Charleston mm -hmm. today. And we've gotten behind the eight ball in terms of infrastructure improvement because we've been growing so. I mean, we're at 700,000 folks in our community now, metro area, and projected to be a million folks. And we haven't built that many new roads and bridges. So we've got to step up the construction of new roads and bridges. Well, that's mostly funded through our state DOT and our county half cent sales tax. Mm -hmm. But it's critical that we finish I-526. There's some existing uh, projects already approved, like intersections like 6 and, um, and, uh, and 7, uh, Sam Rittenberg, West Ashley, Main Road, and Savannah Highway. That uh, intersection needs to be improved. I would propose that we consider going ahead and widen Glen McConnell uh, Boulevard, and it'll take a little while to get the funding together, but the extension of Glen McConnell is, is a great project mm -hmm. to connect Glen McConnell around Somerville to I-26. But long term, Charlie, we really got to improve our public transit system and make it a viable alternative to folks uh, riding in their cars. Um, and luckily, the COG is, is doing a study right now on that most heavily traveled corridor, which is I-26. And they plan in December to um, uh, unveil the proposal for what the public transit uh, alternative should and could be, that we can get priced out and then seek the federal dollars that we're gonna need for that. I would like to expand whatever they come up with to East Cooper, West Ashley, James Island, and have a regional public transit system that really works. That'll take us a little while mm -hmm. to get going, but we've got to work on it. And then you got to look at little things. I think of um, uh, the backup on Glen McConnell, West Ashley every morning. Right. Maybe we should talk with the school district about West Ashley High School starting a little later, say at nine o'clock in the morning, so that commuters have the chance to get past before school starts. So we've got to tweak it at all angles, but construction is important, public transit is important, and then working the, the particulars of, um, of managing our traffic. And Leon spoke many times about synchronizing the lights. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the lights West Ashley, for example, are synchronized, but they were done about 30 years ago, and it needs a major upgrade. And I guess whoever's mayor next would be able to take credit, but the city's actually been working on this for years, and they've been trying to get the funding from the DOT to do the upgrades, which are in process right now and should be completed by first quarter of next year. All right, Mr. Stavon I mean, uh, Mr. Stavonakis, what are your plans on easing congestion? Well, this is, as John said, you know, <clears throat> one of the number one issues on voters' minds, if not the number mm -hmm. one, and it has such a dramatic impact. I, like I said, live in West Ashley. I drive my kids to school every day and then commute into town for work. Right. Uh, so I am a commuter. I'll be a commuting mayor. So I'm living in this traffic just like uh, most of your listeners are. Mm -hmm. The other day, it took me an hour and a half to make that route, take my kids to school, get to work downtown. That's totally unacceptable. And, you know, again, uh, I'm going to get into the details. You can't uh, ignore the fact that you've got to deal with managing your growth on top of dealing with the traffic projects mm -hmm. that we need uh, to undertake. And like I said in the beginning, I'm the only one here that's actually written and passed a growth management plan. I mm -hmm. did it for Charleston County. It was a landmark plan in the state of South Carolina. It included an urban growth boundary, park and green space preservation. It took thousands of units of uh, potential developments off the table to developers. They were not happy uh, that we pushed that plan through. But in the county areas, it's worked. We need someone who can do that for our city now. We need someone who's got relationships to get some regional planning underway uh, in our city and region, and I I have that experience. It's proven experience. I can make it happen for our city. On the issues of transportation, um, obviously we've talked a lot about 526. Again, I'm the one person in the race with a proven record. I've been pushing for this project for over a decade. It has $420 million secured. Mm -hmm. I secured that, those funds as chairman of Charleston County Council. I restarted this project after years of, of it being dormant. I am 100% committed to completing the project. Um, and let's be honest, the reason that we haven't made any progress is, you know, that there's a group trying to kill the project, mm -hmm. a group that John served on the board of, a group that he has left in his will uh, as a donor. I mean, we gotta be serious about who we're electing here and who we can trust to deal with this and other traffic problems. And the contrast on this could not be more clear. I mean, you've got me with a proven record supporting and funding this project, working for it tirelessly. And John, who I know says he supports it, but uh, he's not named one thing he's ever done for the project. And the fact is he has close ties to the organization trying to kill it and that has delayed it to the tune of an expense of $300 million to taxpayers, an extra $300 million. Um, but 526 is not the answer to all of our prayers. I mean, it will do a lot for us. Um, we've got to address other choke points around the region. Mm -hmm. We need a leader who's got relationships in the legislature and with our congressional delegation who can go get money for these projects, Charlie. We can talk about them all day long, but if we can't secure funds, if we don't have a mayor who has uh, those relationships with the folks that control the large pots of money that fund transportation, we're not going to get anything done. I have those relationships just like Mayor Riley did. Mm -hmm. I can go to Columbia and lobby for Charleston to get the money that we deserve and that we're paying in back home. And so we've got choke points on Maybank, on Main Road, Savannah Highway, 61, Glen McConnell, uh, Folly Road. We need to address those areas. We do it with new technology, synchronizing lights in real time. So these, this technology is not what John's talking about, not what the city's using now. It watches traffic in real time. It saves taxpayers tens of millions of dollars when you implement it, and it moves traffic. It watches the patterns and adjusts right. on its own. So we've got to do that, and we've got to have a regional approach, again, with regional leaders working together to target the choke points and go in and, and, and seek funding and get those projects underway. I want to get back to uh, synchronizing the lights in just a minute. Um, John, do you want to respond to him about uh, your decision to support 526? It's been absolutely clear in this campaign. Uh, Leon and I, I think this makes our 30th appearance mm -hmm. together during the campaign, and he's he heard me 30 times say, I'm for the completion of I-526. Right. So, um, um, but but the allegation that you have stalled this project, or in some way uh, the company that you work for has stalled this project, what about that? Well, as I mentioned, I've been a leader in many civic organizations mm -hmm. from the crisis ministry, our homeless shelter, 
to a group I founded eight years ago called South Carolina Strong, which helps former offenders get a new start on life. I served on the board of the Coastal Conservation League before you could Google right. things on your computer because Google hadn't been created yet. It was 20 years ago. And, um, you know, to, to, to blame me for, for a group that here 20 years ago that I'm not no longer involved with, I think is um, a, l a little uh, misrepresentation to say right. the least. But, um, you know, I, and I left the crisis ministry um, a bequeath in my will as well, and the Palmetto Project and, and, and other groups. So um, I, I, I really don't get it. But, you know, Leon has, has secured, helped secured some funding, mm -hmm. you know, years ago. This project is really on life support. Uh, it's been reported in the paper. It's been in the ditch. And, and you know, he's really in a good position in Columbia to help us get some future funding for this thing. So I really look forward to the opportunity to serve our community as mayor. And I will work with Leon. He'll be on the House Ways and Means Committee in the House, and, and we can be a team to help make I-526 get completed. All right, guys, if you'll put your headphones on, I'm going to take a question okay. from a, a caller this morning. We're going to go to Joseph uh, downtown here on line one. Good morning, Joseph. How are you? <laughs> Are you there? John, do we have Joseph sorry, on the... Yeah. Okay, no, that's all right. Joseph, what's your question for the candidates this morning? Yeah, sorry about that. I had you on mute. Um, that's all right. Well, I voted for John the first time because um, I felt like he was really a conservative um, candidate that you know, I could support. But then when I looked and I saw that um, he had gotten endorsements from Jenny, um, I was just wondering why as a candidate would you accept an endorsement from someone who is just so far to the left? Well, Jenny has been a community leader in Charleston for many years and, and, and a source of, I think, positive change. She founded a great organization called Wings for Kids. She's been very involved in improving our schools. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm proud to have her support and um, the many voters that um, voted for her. I hope, I hope they'll consider voting for me um, next Tuesday. All right, we've got Carol out in Goose Creek. She's got a question for Mr. Stavronakis. Good morning. How are you, Carol? Good morning. How yes, you? good. What's your question? Well, the question is uh, for Mr. Starvinakis. I've watched him for a while, and I'm curious uh, and kind of concerned. Uh, he appointed his brother to two state boards. One was the Aviation Board and one was the MUSC Board of Trustees. My question for Mr. Starvinakis, can we look forward to if he should be voted in again, that he would do the same thing? And should an elected official use his position to bring his family on board? Thank you for the question. The answer is no, and I want the record to be clear. I've never appointed my brother to any board. I've never nominated him for any board. I've never voted for him for any board. Um, he did his own work and sought those positions on his own, and other people nominated him, screened him, approved him, and voted for him. I have never, again, to be totally clear, never appointed him to anything, never nominated him for any position, and never voted for him for any position. So you're not, you were not involved in the process? I was there, mm -hmm. obviously, okay, yeah. but I did not nominate, vote, or appoint him. It would be... First of all, illegal for me to probably appoint him to anything. Right. And so um, the recusal of my vote is on the record in both of the times that he ran. Um, he worked hard and did that on his own and has his own set of talents and and desire to serve our community. And I applaud him for it. It's unfortunate that this kind of misinformation mm. and other, you know, really negative stuff about me has been going around. There's a bunch of it. Uh, you know, last night, terrible, terrible stuff from some of John's core supporters. And, um, you know, and of course, uh, a lot more of that got injected in his campaign for the runoff. But, uh, you know, I'm not engaging in, in, in that kind of stuff and ju just want the record to be clear. And I think I've set the record straight on All right, John, he mentioned you. Uh, you want to respond? Well, well, I just want to say that ethics uh, laws in South Carolina are generally very lax. And, and that's one of the reasons why, just the other day, I proposed a five points ethics uh, in government plan mm -hmm. for the city of Charleston to try to elevate above the state law, above what we're required to do, that city government be open and transparent, that we should be an open book, that people ought to 
be able to readily see where we spend our money and how and that the mayor and council member and, and senior city officials should be accountable to the public uh, in the way we conduct business both during um, city government and in uh, relationships afterwards as well. All right, your press conference uh, about ethics. Yes, sir. What uh, brought that about and was that, a, was that targeted at anybody in particular? It was not. I just okay. believe that ethics uh, management in South Carolina is, is poor and that we can do a better job. The city of Charleston ought to be an example to the rest of the state as to uh, elevating the transparency and accountability of, uh, of mm -hmm. government to mm -hmm. its citizens. And did, did you feel like that was aimed at you in any way, his, uh, his press conference? You know, I don't know. I, honestly, I, I wondered what it was about. I think mm -hmm. we've had the most ethical and professional mayor that any city has ever had for 40 years. I was wondering what it was all about. Um, and I think our city employees, by and large, you know, have mm -hmm. been have been exemplary. Um, but this, again, is a, another example where, you know, people don't have to just accept promises and talk. I've got a record, a strong mm -hmm. record. I introduced ethics reform back in 2012 before it was cool to talk about ethics reform. Right. The most sweeping ethics reforms in South Carolina since Lost Trust I, I introduced. I voted for ethics for, reforms repeatedly in the legislature. I increased, revolutionized, helped increase along with the governor and revolutionized transparency in the legislature. We still got a ways to go at all levels of government in mm -hmm. South Carolina. That's why I continue to vote for and push for strong ethics reform. And I'm happy to live by the most stringent guidelines that we can put in place. And I voted that way. All right, let's go west of the Ashley and talk to Reggie this morning. Good morning, Reggie. Do you have a question for the candidates? Yeah, I guess what I'm still confused on is I understand that both y'all say you're you're pro 526, and it seems to me that the one hurdle that both y'all are still going to face is this Coast Conservation League Nick's 526 group. As a leader, if you're in a position to convince them to do a 180, which it sounds like, Mr. Seckenberg, you've done a 180 on 526. I guess my question is to you, how are you going to convince Dana Beach and his crew to do a 180 on their 526 position? Well, let, let me say that the intergovernmental agreement needs to be finished first, and that agreement is between the County of Charleston mm -hmm. and the State Infrastructure Bank Board and the Department of Transportation, our county and our state government. And um, those are the two branches of government that Leon has been um, a career politician involved with. And, and so my question is, why aren't we under construction now? I mean, he, we, we haven't been able to get this horse out of the ditch. Mm -hmm. We haven't even been able to get the agreement signed by the governmental entities to get the job started. Now, Mayor Riley suggested a couple of years ago when he, he thought it would help to have the city become the local sponsor for the project rather than county. Um, I'm willing to do that as mayor to propose that the city uh, uh, step up and take that role if the county can't get this agreement signed. But for the project to move forward, with, they've got to finish this agreement first, and we've got to push right. on our state leaders to get that done. We've got to take a quick break. We'll get back to that. We'll, we'll, we'll we will get back to that right uh, after this break. This is the Charleston Mayoral's Debate right here on The Big Talker, 1250 WTMA, WTMA.com. Good morning. All right. The Big yeah. Talker. Be first up, uh, we get back. Right now, get a $25 mail-in rebate with any Motorcraft Tested Tough Plus or Tested Tough Max battery. Rebate by prepaid debit card. See your participating Carolina Ford dealer for exclusions and rebate details through 1231.15. I spend my days helping others. It's rewarding, just not always financially. So I got TIAA CREF. They were founded to help people like me meet our financial goals. They've got so many industry accolades, it's unreal. I like taking care of people. Sometimes that even includes myself. Intelligent to serve and built to perform. Uh, Visit TIAA.org. Uh, uh, TIAA yeah, we'll Individual to Institutional okay. Services. Okay. This me. testimonial is an act of portrayal. Investing involves risk. Individual results will vary. 1250 WTMA. Now. 
Here's more of the TMA Morning Show with Charlie James. And a very good morning to you. 937, 23 minutes until 10 o'clock on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA, WTMA.com. As we continue our Charleston Mayor's Debate with John Tecklenburg and Leon Stavronakis, right before the break, uh, John, you uh, you uh, threw something out to uh, Leon about why, if, if the money is, if, if Leon was so instrumental in procuring funds for 526, why hasn't it been built? Leon, would you like to respond to that? Well, you know, this has been going on throughout the campaign. Mm -hmm. John gets asked about transportation, and he he talks and just really doesn't give us any answers for what how we're going to address traffic and transportation. Um, you know, he's talking about agreements and vague comments about contracts. There's a contract in place, okay? Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, to sit here and blame people like me and Mayor Riley, who he calls the career politicians for not getting it done, is absurd. We He asked the question, why isn't it done? And it's not done because of the Coastal Conservation League, the board he served on, the group he has in his will, has blocked the project, delayed the project, driven the cost up now by an estimated $300 million. People just need to look at the facts. That's why I want to debate over and over again why mm -hmm. John has no-showed at three, why he's turned down another uh, televised debate for tonight, because I just want to talk about these issues and tell people to use their common sense. If you're for 526 and you really people really believe you're going to try to get the job done, why does Nick's 526 support you while Charlestonians to complete 526 support me? If you know, if you have that record, stand up to the people that are blocking it. Don't don't call me and the other people who have served our community, career politicians, and act like it's our fault. We've worked our tails off to get this project going and to get it finished, and I'll continue to do that. And people know that I'm serious about it. So people need to look at the record, and that's why these debates are important. That's why, you know, I'm frustrated that John already has no show for three debates this week. Um, I'm happy that he's doing this one, and you know, I'm glad you offered to do it, mm -hmm. but it's what, 9.30 in the morning, people right. are at work. Um, we need to have a prime time debate on television and let people evaluate our records on these important issues. Mm -hmm. And you know, as long as he keeps denying voters the opportunity to do that, I'm gonna keep setting the record straight. The record is, I have supported this project. I've worked for it. He cannot name one thing he's ever done for it, yet all the groups that are opposing it, are he's either got a relationship with or support him, and I think that is revealing to people. But again, he talked and didn't say much. It's not just about 526. We've got to improve Main Road. We've got to improve Maybank Highway. We've got to improve the intersection of 26 and 526. We've got to get traffic lights synced up so 17 and 61 and Folly Road uh, function more smoothly. We got to have a mayor that can get those things done. Talk doesn't do anything. We need someone with a proven record and proven relationships to get us the funding and get us moving in this community. All right, John, how do you respond to that? He says that you have uh, backed out of three debates so far, but you're four. here the, uh, four debates so far. So you're you're here this morning. How do you uh, how do you respond to that? Well, this is the thirtieth time that Leon and I have been on a stage or mm -hmm. in a forum or a debate together. And, and many questions have been asked, and I'm, I've been an open book giving my answers, and I've, oh, 30th time today, I've, I've reiterated my support to complete I-526. I'm right. sorry, he just doesn't believe me. Yes, I served on the Coastal Conservation Board about 20 years ago. Uh, I think they're very litigious now, and um, I, I don't support the way that they do business. And um, you, why, why are they in your will then, John? If because you support I was on the doing. board 20 years ago, and they began as a very conservation-minded mm -hmm. environmental group. And I'm a outdoorsman, and I supported that aspect of of what they were created to do. And they've morphed into opposition to all kinds of projects that that I disagree with them. They have a lobbyist who's a big supporter of Leon's. Uh, she was a fellow legislator, legislator with him, and, and now is one of his big supporters. And she's been a lobbyist for the Coastal mm -hmm. Conservation League. So, you know, my experience with him was 20 years ago. I've been firmly committed to finishing the job. I think the fact that it's not under construction now is a clear sign that politics, as usual, doesn't work. I think Leon could be a great asset to help 
of finding the additional funding for it as a legislator and as a member of the Ways and Means Committee. You know, Mayor Riley has been for the project for a long time, very supportive, and, and I have to ask people, do, do you think Mayor Riley's a pretty influential guy? Mm -hmm. And everybody says, sure, he's one of the most, influ he's the greatest mayor in America. Well, there's no magic button under the mayor's desk to push to get this project going. We need is, to get the, in, the this agreement finished and get the funding in place and move it forward. Is this even a moot point? Because we're seeing people like Chip Limehouse saying that this thing is all but dead in the water. No, I mean, that that's ridiculous. There's a signed contract. Mm -hmm. You know, the facts uh, are important. There's a signed contract mm -hmm. to build this road. There's a firm commitment for $420 million, a a commitment that needs one more step for 120 more on top of that. Um, and then we got to figure out the rest. But the point, going back to the point, you know, I, I'm pro conservation. I've got a 95% lifetime conservation record. But groups that do things that hurt the people I want to represent, that cost them $300 million uh, increases in price on an important road project, that block progress in, their com in our community, I can be pro conservation and not leave that group in my will. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to say you don't agree with what they're doing and then you're funding them through your will. Um, but again, we need a mayor who can get this done, can get these other projects done. I've got a proven record and relationships to get it done, and my record is not inconsistent with my rhetoric. I mean, right. I put my money where my mouth is and I back up my talk with what I with action and what I do. All right, let's go to, uh, we're going to take a question from a caller this morning. We've got Craig West of the Ashley about West, about West Ashley projects. Good morning, Craig. How are you? Are you there? We're waiting for Craig. I'm here. There we go. All right, hey. Craig, what's your, uh, what's hey, your question? Craig. Hi, gentlemen. Good morning. I'm sitting here in West Ashley listening to the sound of traffic on Glenn McConnell listening to you guys debate the completion of I-526. What was more concerned to me and John, I've spoken to you about this previously. Um, and Leon, I know you've been on county council and you're in state legislature, but why do we want to continue building roads and infrastructure that brings more people into the coastal area? After the disaster of Hurricane Floyd in 1999, which a lot of families were stuck on by 26 to 15 hours, mm. okay, why would you want to continue to support the Long Savannah Project as a mayor of the city of Charleston, without working with the people in Dorchester County and Berkeley County, there's already two roads, Peter Road, to be on either side of the Ashley River. 61 is in the twenty six and Dorchester Road, and 642 goes all the way to Dorchester County. The roads exist. Why build a new one, why the one McConnell, and bring more traffic into this area? All right, Craig, thank you very much. We'll start out with uh, Mr. Tecklenburg on this. Well, we need the more roads because we've already grown, and mm. the growth is upon us, so to speak, whether we like it or not. Forty-seven people, I think you mentioned, are mm. day are moving to the Charleston area. It's, it's a great place to live, and we've attracted new businesses, like thankfully, like Boeing and Volvo, and so we we're behind the eight ball, as I said before. But we need to catch up and prepare for the future. So I think new new projects like extending the Glen McConnell and widen it or good long term. How you control growth though is by zoning and by managing uh, what gets built in the future. Um, in my first year as mayor, I plan to do a thorough review of our city zoning because that's what entitles what's able to be built. Mm -hmm. And one example, um, you know, we, we've uh, had these proposals that are too dense and putting too much density in one place. One example is the Sergeant Jasper a proposal down on the peninsula and and I was at the BAR meeting and the zoning board meetings uh, protesting the density the size of what they were trying to do there and it's not that I'm against you know growth and development but we need to manage it properly it needs to be smart we should be more concerned with quality rather than quantity all right Leon what about that how do you manage uh, growth and infrastructure yeah you you do it you do it through zoning, mm -hmm. do it through planning with other governments, regional planning, both your neighboring cities and counties. Um, you do it by building infrastructure. You got to have a mayor that has experience uh, getting these things done. I do. Um, you also need to ask yourself out there, you know, what people's records are on this. I mean, I've, I've listened to John talk about opposing these projects, um, but he's been making money 
from a company for 15 years that's one of the biggest development companies in Charleston. And I didn't hear him complaining when they just opened uh, the new Midtown project, mm -hmm. the largest hotel project in Charleston since Charleston Place. You know, his complaints came after his company opened that project. Um, you know, uh, he's been a part of of a lot of this. I don't think it's bad if it's managed right. I think growth and and if managed is good. It creates jobs. It, it you know it can it can do a lot of things for a community. I haven't supported Sergeant Jasper, contrary to what a lot of the misinformation put out there during the campaign is, and never supported that uh, any of the proposals that were put out in that project. I just put out a very strong statement again about my opposition to the gathering place zonings right. in in, in uh, areas that are already overburdened with traffic, like James Island and Johns Island. And again, we need uh, someone to come in and put a growth management, a smart, sustainable growth management plan in place for our city, just like I did for the county. We can do that for our city, but we need someone who we can trust on the issue, someone that has a proven record again, someone who, whose rhetoric matches their record. And, uh, and that's really important for the people of Charleston uh, to hear this and to know the differences between us, not just in what we're saying, but what we've actually done uh, leading up to running for mayor, you know, people say a lot of things when they're running for office, but what have you done? And there's clear distinctions here between John and I on this. All right, John, what about your uh, one-year moratorium on the building of hotels in downtown? Well, we have about 3,500 rooms uh, already downtown, mm -hmm. and there's about 1,500 that are in some, maybe 1,200 now that Midtown is open, um, that are in some process of construction, um, so that will put us over 5,000 rooms downtown. And I think you have to ask yourself, when is enough enough? Um, you know, in 1997, when I was working for the city, the city did a review of uh, accommodations and decided uh, thoughtfully to disallow hotels greater than 50 rooms to be south of Calhoun Street. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we need to take a pause and review our policies and for example maybe we need to extend that line further north that would limit the size of hotels you know in a certain area and the other concern that I have is that I want Charleston to be have a very diverse economy you know I'm really proud that we've been attracting knowledge-based businesses and creative businesses, software companies. Mm -hmm. And if you put a hotel on every corner, if tourism is, if you got all your eggs in one basket, it doesn't allow you that diversity in our economy that I think is important. All right, I've got a question on the uh, on the phone here for uh, Leon. Let's go to Cameron, west of the Ashley. Good morning, Cameron. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing fantastic. Hi, what's, uh, what's your question this morning for Leon? I'm just curious about Leon's stance on ethics again, because he is, you know, held a press conference and said, I'm not going to participate in this negative campaigning. And yet the very first thing after the first election out of his mouth was negative about Mr. Tecklenburg. So I'm just curious, and now he's having these negative commercials. So I'm just curious about that. Mostly. Okay, I'm sorry. That was Jane over in, uh, on uh, John's no. Island. Thank you, Jane. We appreciate that. Um, wh what about that? Has this campaign turned negatively on? No, I mean, the, these, these ads are issue-based. And again, they were a response to John's refusal to show up at events, his refusal to appear in a televised debate. Um, they're all issue-oriented. John's a very nice person. We've been friends for a long, long time. He's a wonderful guy. His family are wonderful people. Um, I would, you know, I, I would never say anything about anything but the issues. The right. fact is, John doesn't want to appear in front of voters and ask answer questions on the stage, side by side. Those 30 debates when there were six, seven people in the race, I mean, you know, when you're one-on-one, -on -one, it's different. That's why mm -hmm. they do it in presidential debates, they do it in gubernatorial races. When it gets down to two people, voters deserve to see them both shoulder to shoulder and listen to them address the issues, answer for their record, and all the commercials do is point out the record that John is refusing to talk about. They're not negative, they're issue-based, and all they do is highlight the facts. The facts, by the way, come off of his bio, mm -hmm. where he talks about being, being involved in development, uh, putting together the 20-plus million dollar Magnolia development, uh, developing hotels in downtown Charleston. The comments about uh, the bike lane are from the Post and Courier and his interviews 
with Charleston moves. I mean, that's a big issue. Are you serious about traffic? If you are, how do you support closing lanes to people who are waiting in traffic for an hour or two right. hours to get to work and home? So we're just talking about issues. Okay. And, um, and I voted for ethics reform repeatedly, the most stringent ethics reforms that have been proposed in South Carolina. All right, John, uh, do you feel the campaign has gone negative? And what about closing down the, the, the one lane on the Ashley River Bridge to open it up to, to bike and pedestrian traffic? Well, I'm a positive guy, mm -hmm. and, and it's sad that the, the campaign of Leon's has gone negative with their first with their ad here and in the runoff election. And on election night, he was misrepresenting what I do for a living. He misrepresented in the ad my position on I-526. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I'm sad that that's occurred. Um, regarding the bike lane, um, you know, city council passed, uh, approved that bike lane closure mm -hmm. by eight to five vote, and it's a county project now. And con I'm concerned about the impact on, on traffic and I go across that bridge every morning. I live West Ashley as well right. in, in Windermere. So that's that's my first right hand turn on I'm on that bridge. And normally it flows pretty well. Uh, the backup generally occurs across the bridge where people are, are trying to cross Lockwood onto B Street. And so the first part of the project is very good. The county plans to widen that exit so to add an additional lane uh, to, before you cross Lockwood that should relieve that backup some, and so that's positive. We agree on that. And, 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 then, um, and then the county now wants to do a test, which I, which I support. I think we should do the test. Now, what I really uh, support is that we find a safer way for, for pedestrians and bicyclists to get across the river. I mean, it's 2015 in two major parts of our city. You can't really safely go by walking or, or bicycling. I went last week to a city traffic and transportation committee meeting, and a new proposal has, has come out about reopening the James Island Expressway right. to pedestrians and bikes without taking away a lane of traffic. And I think that's going okay. to be reviewed by let's council, uh, let, and Leon, I think it's a very good idea. Let's let Leon respond to that real quick yeah. before we go to the phone. So, you know, I didn't misrepresent anything, let me be clear. Um, he's admitted it's on his bio that he served on the board of the group that's trying to kill 526. I'm pointing that out. Mm. Again, we've established today he left them in, in his will. There's nothing inaccurate about that. Um, it's completely accurate. It comes out of his information. I didn't misrepresent anything. If, if, if the information on his bio about what he does for a living and who he works for is wrong, then he needs to fix that. I took it off of, again, right. his own page about what he does. On the bike lane, again, this is you know something where I'm just asking voters to really think for a minute about who's serious about traffic. Mm. We're actually spending money on part of a project that even the supporters of acknowledge will slow traffic down, even in its most optimistic scenario, which I think is a, is a ridiculously rosy scenario, it will slow traffic down. It, you know, it is just wrong when people are sitting in traffic for an hour or two at a time to get, work, get to work and back home to their families, for us to be spending money on projects that we know, even the proponents of, admit their most optimistic scenario will slow traffic down. We need to be spending right. money right. to move traffic faster. I support a bike lane, a dedicated bike lane. I'm working with DOT to make one happen, and I believe we will make one happen. I'm completely committed to it, but we can't close lanes to vehicles. All right, let's go to Scott West of the Ashley. He's got a question for you guys. Good morning, Scott. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, we know the city already gives Memorial Day short trip because that's when they kick off the Spoleto Festival. And, um, but the city has again marginalized the veteran community by moving the Veterans Day Parade from its traditional Sunday afternoon to, to Saturday morning and, you know, over to East Bay from King Street. And um, Real quick, uh, Scott. Do you think Second Sunday should take precedence? And I'm, I'm looking, if you do, fine. If you don't, I'm looking for one of you to, to make a firm, non-equivocating commitment to restoring Veterans Day, the parade, this family tradition that belongs to the people in Charleston, not the Chamber of Commerce, will you restore the Veterans Day parade to Sunday afternoon? Absolutely. And we can have Second Sunday that month on the third Sunday. And I must <laughs> say, I was at a... Um, 
fundraiser last night for the Fisher House, which mm -hmm. is a wonderful project which will support veterans right. uh, in our city. And I've been a supporter of that since the idea came up. And it's going to be like a McDonald, oh, Royal yeah, McDonald a, House for the families of veterans. Yeah. I think it's a great thing for our city to All support right. as well. Yeah, I was at a yeah, veterans, veterans event yesterday, and you know that 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 is not negotiable. Right. I mean, we have to honor our Absolutely. veterans and and. Um, there's no question. All right, guys, we're going to end with closing statements. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Tecklenburg, you will begin your closing statements. you got about one minute, okay? Okay. Well, thank you very much, Charlie, for having us in the mighty TMA, and thank you all listeners for listening to both Leon and I, Leon and I here together, and the TV camera as well. <laughs> so we're here together. This is the 30th time we've been together. My vision for the city of Charleston is for us to be the number one place to live. Mm -hmm. And that involves all kinds of quality of life issues. We've certainly talked about traffic today, but it also involves things like strategic economic development and, and revitalizing areas of West Ashley that I think is so important. Working on our housing stock in our city, we need to try to provide more affordable housing. We need to push our regional authorities, CARTA and the COG, to come up with a workable, a public transit system that's a viable alternative for our citizens. We need to push our schools to um, to 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 work on the inequality and inequity that exists in some of our schools. We've got many challenges of, in front of us to work on, and I have the business sense, the common sense, and the moral compass to tackle challenges in working cooperatively and collaboratively with our citizens and other jurisdictions right. to work on these quality of life issues and make Charleston just the finest place to be. I'm, I'm looking forward to the opportunity and ask for your support on Tuesday. Mr. Stavronakis. Charlie, thank you for doing this. And um, John, I hope you'll take up two of the televised. We have two offers to, for televised debates live for the voters of this city. I think they deserve it. I hope you'll stop delaying and rejecting those and, and agree to them like I have. Voters deserve it. Um, Thank you for doing this, Charlie. It's been great. And, you know, I know a lot of people in our city love and cherish our city like I do, feel like it's the best place in America to live and to work and raise a family. Um, I know a lot of people in our city want to see the same standard of excellence for their neighborhoods and their part of town applied uh, across all of Charleston. And I'm committed to that. This is the station the Sorry. country comes to for the most stimulating talk. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Damaging winter storms, blazers, and planes. I'm Evan Lane. Getting a couple of pictures with you guys. Midwest is experiencing okay. severe winds and twisters today. A tornado took the roof off a Walmart store in Knoxville, Iowa, while this woman was shopping. They made us go to the back, and like the water was just pouring out of the ceiling at Walmart, and the lights.